Hello everybody. Welcome to this video on related rates. And in this video, I'm going to start by first kind of continuing the conversation that we had in class today, um, where we were just looking at the computations that we would need to be able to do in order to solve related rates problems. Okay, so specifically, we've got to be able to take formulas and we have to differentiate implicitly with respect to time. Okay, so we're going to have two, three variables, and they're all going to be changing with respect to time. So when we take their derivatives, you're going to end up with derivatives for each of the variables with respect to time. Okay, so I believe in each of the classes, we did get through all um, one, two, and three of the you try in our notes. So I'm going to go ahead and work through number four with you first. So if you got to see number four in class today, you can either watch it again or you can fast forward through this part, um, or you can watch it again as a quick review. All right, so in number four, we have a formula for area. And it tells us that area is equal to pi times r, so r is a function, times the function square root of x h squared plus r squared. And we are supposed to find the rate of change of the area with respect to time, and then they give us all the other values to plug in for. Okay, so first thing that you should note is that in this problem, or any problem for that matter, pi is a constant. So, um, so we don't have to worry about pi interfering with our uh, rest of our computations, you can just let pi kind of hang out in front, okay, because what's going on in the rest of this problem is we have function r times function, the square root function. So two functions being multiplied together, and we're trying to take the derivative, that means we're going to need to use the product rule. Okay, so if we look at the left-hand side, very easy, we just need the derivative of area with respect to time. On the right-hand side, this pi is going to just hang out because it's a constant. And on the inside then, I'm going to use the product rule. So we're going to take the derivative of the first function, so that is dr dt times our second function. So square root of h squared plus r squared. Plus, we need the first function, which was r, times the derivative of the square root function. So when we take its derivative, we've got to use chain rule. So that's going to be times 1 half times h squared plus r squared. Decrease your exponent by 1, so that goes to a negative half, times the derivative of this inside function. So the derivative of the inside function, chain rule again, 2h times the derivative of its inside, which is dh dt, plus 2r times dr dt. Okay, so there is our differentiation step. Okay, so now from here, we're just solving for dA dt, and they gave us values for everything else to plug in. Okay, so just plugging in, we get dA dt equals pi, and then substituting everything in, we get 1 fifth square root of 16 plus 9 plus 3 halves. Square root of 16 plus 9, that one would be in the denominator. And then times 2 times 4 times a half plus 2 times 3 times 1 fifth. Okay, and then from there I trust that you can do the computation. And what you should get for your final answer, dA dt is equal to 64 pi over 25. Okay, and this is a changing radi or a changing area, so our units will be units squared per unit of time. Okay, and that is basically what you're going to be doing in your homework tonight. So um, I have you doing numbers one through eight. 1 through 4 are similar, and 5 through 8 are similar. So I'm just going to start off, I'm just going to kind of show you the setup for um, number 1 and the setup for number 5. And then we'll get into the applications tomorrow in class. 
Okay, so for number one, they just gave us uh, y equals square root of x, and they have asked us to find dy dt, and they have given us some values for um, x, and they gave us values for dx dt. So um, for part a, we are finding dy dt. We need dy dt when x is equal to 4 and dx dt is equal to 3. Okay, so this will be uh, very similar to what we just finished. So we're going to first take a derivative with respect to time. So we'll do dy dt. The right-hand side, that's x raised to the 1 half. So we're going to have to chain rule that. So 1 half. Now x is being raised to the negative 1 half times the derivative of the inside function. So remember, x is a function of t. Um, we're going to uh, take a derivative dx dt. Okay, and then from here we can just plug in uh, the values that they gave us. So dy dt equals 1 half, x is 4, and then dx dt is 3. Okay, and um, you're going to do exactly the same thing for part B. So I'm not going to show you part B, but uh, part B, they're just asking you uh, do the same thing, but you're plugging in different numbers. Okay. So the next problem we're going to look at is number five from our homework. And they have given us some information in the original problem statement. They have told us that a point is moving along the graph of the given function such that dx dt is two centimeters per second. So we have give, been given dx dt is 2 centimeters per second. And they would like us to find dy dt um, for different particular values of x. So in part a, they want us to find dy dt when x is equal to negative 1. Okay, so I'm just going to look at part a with you dy dt when x is equal to negative 1. And the equation they gave us is y equals 2x squared plus 1. All right, so we can go ahead and take a derivative. So with respect to time, left-hand side, we have the derivative of y with respect to time. On the right-hand side, we're going to have 4x times the derivative of x with respect to time. And then the derivative of 1 is just 0. So now we can go ahead and plug in dy dt. That's going to equal 4 times our x value we're supposed to use is negative 1. And they told us in the original problem that dx dt is equal to 2 centimeters per second. Okay, so when we uh, multiply that together, we end up with negative 8. And then our units are going to be centimeters per second. So if we kind of look at, kind of visualize a picture of that graph, it's a parabola. Um, at the moment that we have a point at x equals negative 1, the rate of change of x is 2 centimeters per second. The y value at that particular moment, dy dt, so the change in y with respect to time at that particular moment is negative 8 centimeters per second. Okay, so then I'm going to leave up to you to um, do parts B and C and then um, the remaining problems in that set. Okay, so tomorrow when you come to class, we're going to be doing a, um, an exploration together and we'll start talking about how to set up and solve some application problems. So I'll see you then.